Glory to God. Somebody say, I experience uh, the miracles uh, of the overflow. Do you believe God's word? I experience miracles uh, of the overflow. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I welcome every one of us to church this morning. We had a great conference yesterday. We thank God for it. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. All right. Let's not forget we will be having <clears throat> our workforce meeting immediately after the service. Those of us who are online, I welcome every one of us to church. Praise God. We'll continue from where we stopped last week, Sunday. We started um, to share on plans, purposes, and pursuits. Amen. Brother Hagen of uh, Blessed Memory was the one that wrote a book with that title. And it has stuck like, stuck to us like glue. It's become part of our Christianese language. <laughs> and gladly so. Praise God. It's something that we must always. He made us to realize that we've something we always must visit every now and then. Okay? And so, as a church and as a minister, I endeavor to, to teach and preach along those lines as often as possible. Because the world we live in um, so fast paced and um, promotes a lot of uh, individualism, you know, and self self centeredness. The world revol revolves around that. Okay? So, therefore, we have so every now and then have to remind ourselves this is who we are. Praise God. First John 2.15 Love not the world, neither the things of the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So we, we must continually remind ourselves and you see, walking according to the plan of God for your life has a lot to do with how you think. Praise God. It has a lot to do with how you think. It has a lot to do with how I think. I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God that you present yourselves, right, unto God as a living sacrifice. Romans chapter 12 and uh, verse 1. Verse 2 says, it says, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Okay? Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove or approve, okay, that which is the good is also acceptable and is also the perfect will of God. 
for your life. So God is big on his will. God is big on his plans. Like we heard yesterday at the conference, you know, God is not a vending machine. Glory to God. God is, a vend is not a vending machine. And we find out that the way the Christian life, Christianity is being pushed, you know, it seems to be as if it's majorly about you. <laughs> Amen. Just built around our needs. And that's why you find that you hear people say things like, what was the purpose in serving God if he has not been able to, I mean, look at all the myriads of problems that I have. You know, I mean, it hasn't been served. You know, uh, a friend made a comment. Um, and he said that um, uh, some members of this, is it the CMS Society now? Okay, Christian Missionary Society. Um, some, they came, you know. They were one of the first set of people to bring Christianity to Nigeria. And they said several years, of course, tens of years afterwards, they came and um, observed and made some certain comments. Said that when they first brought Christianity to Nigeria, um, they found out that people were going to Sutsiers, DBS, native doctors, shrines, were worshipping idols, and people took their problems there and they interacted with those entities to help solve their problems. Okay? And then they, um, we now embraced Christianity. And then several years after, coming back, he now still observed that, okay, now people don't go to those entities before, like they used to before. But now, they now turn to pastors, prophets. Oh, please come and talk to God for me. Or help me, you know, to beg God to, you know, just, just that same flow. And so you find out that people do not have personal relationships with God like they should. And so they visit God majorly because of their problems. And therefore, and are looking for solution. That's why the narrative of it's all about you. <laughs> became very sellable. And unfortunately, many Christians missed it because we thought it was all about us. But God lets us know that it's not about you. Let's look at Colossians. Let's start from Colossians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, God is there for us. Yes, he's there for us. He says he will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. But that's not all there is. 
we are to live our lives not on our own terms, but on his own terms. Amen. Colossians chapter 1, Paul prayed. One of the Pauline prayers from verse 9. Okay? It says, for this cause, since the day we heard it, we do not cease to pray for you. And to desire. We don't cease to pray for you. And to desire. So which means the believer. Must desire this. Are you following me? The believer must desire this. Praise God. He said. And to desire that you might be filled. With the knowledge of what? His will. So, we are to desire. So, his will, the knowledge of his will, said that you may des a desire that you might be filled, that you might know the will of God. You might have a knowledge of the will of God. So, the will of God is the plan of God for our lives. The plan of God is about his will, what he wills for you. The entirety of your life. That he might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Why? The next verse. Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. Why? It tells you the reason. Uh huh. That you might walk worthy of the Lord. In other words, he said that you might walk, your walk will be a worthy one. So there is unworthy walk. Now, that you might walk worthy of the Lord. So the Ephesian church, he says that you might walk, he wants you to walk worthy of the calling that you have been called. Or worthy of the vocation. It tells the Thessalonian church that too. Worthy of the law. Uh huh. He goes ahead to explain it, what he means. Next verse, I mean, next statement. Walk worthy of the Lord, uh huh. Unto all pleasing. Give me the amplified version. Let's see the amplified version. Unto all pleasing. We don't speak that English in. Amen. You know, when I go to the road and say, unto all pleasing, you like, please, what does that mean? <laughs> so let's see what it means, okay? Let's see. Next verse, next verse. Uh -huh. For the, no, next, that's verse 10. Verse 10. Give me verse 10. That you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. To fully please him in all things. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. For you have created all things. For your what? Pleasure. For your pleasure. So to give you pleasure. To, to, to be pleasurable means that you are pleasing the one to, to whom you have been called. Hallelujah. So, the plan of God is for you to be pleasing to him for your life, for my life to be pleasing to him. Praise God. And our lives will be pleasing to him when we are pursuing his purpose for our lives. You are not just there for nothing. God has a plan and purpose for your life different from yours. Did you hear that? God's plan is different from yours. You should, a, a normal Christian, a good Christian should, should always know that. The plan of God 
is different from your plan. That's where you must start from. It's different. Praise God. He has his own. And the one that will give him pleasure is the one that is his own. It is his own that will give him pleasure, not my own. Glory to God. Glory to God. So it's my responsibility, it's your responsibility to do what? To find out. He says to be filled with the knowledge of his will means that it's something that you have to acquire. It's something you have to find out. It's something you have to look out for. It's something you have to ask him for, not anybody else. You ask him. Glory to God. Amen. Now, where does the will of God begin from? Let's start from there. The will of God or the plan of God, right, is primarily discovered in his written word. It is written of me in the volume of the book, I have come to do your will, O God. So which means that when we are doing the word of God, we are doing the will of God. And you know, last week I shared with us that the will of God is the salvation of man, isn't it? Praise God. Amen. Who will have first, for, uh, 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 first Timothy chapter 2, verse 4? Who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth? So he will have all men to be saved. That is the will of God. He said, God, it is not God's will that any man should perish. Second Peter chapter 3, no, it, is not, it is not God's will that any man should perish. He said, God is not slack in his promise. Uh, praise God. He is not willing that any man should perish, but that everyone will come to repentance, come to the knowledge of the truth, uh, come to the knowledge of salvation. That's why he's long suffering towards us. So, Preaching the gospel, winning the lost, is the primary purpose of God on this earth. So when we align ourselves with that, we are in God's will. Did you hear what I said? Hallelujah. Let me say what I said again last week. That God is not concerned. No, let me not use the word concerned. God is not so. The thing that is primary does not tie to that means nothing to him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can't have that's why as a Christian my desire it's not just to have, okay, so I want to be a multi-millionaire. The money just sitting down in the bank account. I'll be like a rich fool. <laughs> yes. I want to, you know, there was a time we, used to, we, used to, we were pushing this thing, early retirement, right? So that you, that means that you have, your assets are, you have plenty that even if you don't work, your assets will take care of you, work for you all throughout the whole of your life. So you can now say to your soul, soul, rest. Hallelujah. No Christian should die with billions in his account. 
What does it do in your account? I hope you're the, nobody has the desire of being in the Forbes list of billionaires. It's, it's, it doesn't make any sense. If the kingdom of God is not promoted through what you have, that's your, that is the purpose. You will not sleep on more than one bed. Have you discovered that? You will not drive more than one car at a time, even if you have an envoy following you. In your sitting room, no matter how golden the chairs are, you can only sit on one spot at a time. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. That's why Paul says, see, we will, all these things, eh? he said, we came naked and we are going to live naked. Like the story of the man that said, if you bear, please make sure you bury me with my money. He wrote it in his will. There's no problem. We'll bury you. So they went and buried him. After the burial, children went back, dug the ground. At least we have fulfilled your wish. <laughs> Haven't we fulfilled your wish? Yes, we have. Mm. So they went and took it back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. It's all for his what? Pleasure. So it's your responsibility, it's my responsibility as a believer to find out what is the will of God, what is the plan of God for me. So the plan of God is salvation. The plan of God is written in God's word. Praise God. And when we follow God's word, we are following his plans. The plan of God is for you to grow spiritually. Isn't it? Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory forever and ever. Okay? So, if you are not growing spiritually, you are not in God's plans. You are not, you are not walking according to the plan of God. Praise God. The will of God is for you and I to walk in love, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's part of God's plan. It's, written, it's in the written word. So the believer should walk in love. That is walking worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him in all things. Checking out your love life. Hallelujah. Having your lovometer on all the time. Checking out your love life. Yesterday something happened and uh, I, 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 I said some certain things uh, and uh, well, after I said those things, uh, the Holy Spirit rebuked, you know, just brought it to my mind and just brought the love of God on my mind. Hallelujah. Love believes the best. And I said, oh Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't believe the best in that situation. Praise God. That's walking in love. Walking in love. He said, let's walk in love towards one another as Christ what? Loved us. So the believer who is not walking in love is not walking in the plan of God. No. Because if we cannot, if we don't walk in the, if we don't walk the, the, the one that we see, how can we walk in the one that we don't see? Praise God. Preaching the gospel. The ministry of reconciliation has been given to every one of us. You know, I love Paul. Paul, when he got born again, the Bible says that immediately he got his eyes back, right? He just went straight to the synagogue and began to preach. 
That's what the believer should do. Hallelujah. He, did, he just, he said, well, we, he, had, he had not even entered into his call. Someone says, well, I'm waiting until uh, my ordination. You are ordained the day you got born again. John 15, 16. Hallelujah. You have not chosen you, me, but I have what? Chosen you and ordained you. Tell your neighbor you are ordained. Tell him again, there is an ordination on your life. Praise God. You know, someone has asked me, Pastor, why don't we ordain people in our church? Hallelujah. Well, we are going to do an ordination very soon. I'm thinking maybe we might even do in camp meeting, but still wrapping my head around it. Glory to God. Don't wait until somebody says, uh -huh, you are an ordained minister before you go and start doing that. No. You were ordained the day you got born again. He has committed unto us the what? The ministry of... Uh, come on, talk to me. The ministry of what? Reconciliation. That's the will of God. God says, I want to know the special ministry the Lord has given to me. Do the one that he has revealed first. Praise God. When was the last time we preached to a soul? Do you have souls in your prayer lists that you are praying for? Hallelujah. How hard are we walking towards that? That is the plan of God. It's the plan of God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. This idea say then. Walk in the spirit. And you will not uh, fulfill the loss of the flesh. So it is the plan of God for you to walk in the spirit. I could not speak to you as unto spiritual, but as unto babes, but as unto carnal or worldly, as unto babes, for you are yet carnal. But walk in the spirit. Develop your spirituality. Glory to God. You know, coming to church, meditating on God's word, that's the plan of God. It's the will of God. It's in the word. Hallelujah. How we handle spiritual matters. Right? Will tell us how much of the will of God we will eventually walk in. Yeah. How do you handle spiritual matters? The things of the spirit. Do you handle them with levity? Are you as serious about them as you are about your career? Very important. Glory to God. Glory to God. You can't be talking about, well, I want to know the special ministry the Lord has given unto me when the one <laughs> that he has given to you, you are not doing. You are handling spiritual matters with levity. Hallelujah. Say to, my, say to yourself, I don't belong to myself. Come on, say it again. I don't belong to myself. Come on, say it again. I don't belong to myself. I belong to him. He said, he said you are not your own. He said, for you are bought with a price. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's a price tag on your head. 
You are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are his. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are his. You are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God. To you I give all the praise. To you I give all the praise. Let my life be used for your glory. To you I give all the praise. Hallelujah. And you know, this will therefore inform the way we live our lives. The choices that we make. Because we don't belong to ourselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the choices are not, your choices are not therefore about what you like. Ah, God, it doesn't mean that when I become a Christian that, that, that uh, I shouldn't like anything. He didn't say so. Praise God. You know, God is not concerned whether it is um, Panda. Is, there, is it Panda? No? Prada. Excuse my ignorance. <laughs> I'm just trying to feel among <laughs> you, know, you know God doesn't know whether it is Prada you are wearing or it is Versace or Boutini is there anything like Boutini eh? Giorgio Vuitton Armani or Ajegule He's not concerned about that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. No, he's not concerned. It's, 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 it's. Even though was his name, John the Baptist ate locust and wild honey. You know, it was not God that told him to eat locust and wild honey. I hope you know that. <laughs> it wasn't God that he felt, he, he felt that, well, since he was a forerunner of, of no, he has one, he, I mean, let me separate myself and live in the desert. Let me be eating locusts uh, to show how dedicated I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. Of course, he, he wants you to eat well and eat balanced diets. Okay, for your health's sake. Praise the Lord. So, he, he, he's all those physical things. Praise God. He, he's not so concerned, he's not so concerned, except it's going to affect his plan and purpose for your life. He said, don't take thought for your life what you are going to wear. It's no big deal to God. Did you hear that? Come on, it's no big deal to God. It's not. It's not. It's no big deal to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We still preach the gospel with two shirts and three trousers. And the message did not change. Glory to God. But he said, he said, he said, whether it be by life or by what? By death, Christ must be what? Magnified in my body. <laughs> Glory to God. Okay, so let me make, move a little further now. I said that we are going to talk about is this seven or nine things in the course of this teaching that have to do with the will of God, the plan of God for our lives. And these are questions that we must ask ourselves. As a believer, learn to ask questions. Praise God. Learn to do what? 
ask questions. Learn to ask questions. Let's see. Paul's after Paul's conversion, after he got born again, he met with the Lord Jesus. The first question that he asked, verse 6, Acts chapter 9. He says, so Paul, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, what do you want me to do? So, when you get as a believer, that's one of the primary questions you need to ask yourself. You need to ask, not yourself, to ask God. Start to ask God if you have never asked him before. Say, Lord, what do you want me to do? So, there is the assignment. What do you want me to do? And the Lord Jesus answered him. What do you want me to do? You know, uh, uh, many years ago, because I, I, I asked, for many years I kept on asking, my, asking the Lord, you know, anytime I wanted to pray about, you know, uh, the plan of God for my life and all that. So I would ask God. And so, so for many years, the Lord would just ask, tell me, stay where you are. What is it that you are doing now? Keep doing it. I knew that I was called into the ministry right from a, my early age, uh, my early teen, teenage years. I knew I was called into the ministry. So I had known that. But so part time, I just kept on. So when, how, you know, how am I going to get into it? You know, what exactly is it you want me to do? You know, so, but the Lord would just tell me, just stay there. Stay where you are. Do what you're doing. Just keep preparing. You know, that was the word he used. Just keep preparing. Keep preparing. So, I remember the very first time I heard an audible voice. I've only heard the audible voice of the Holy Spirit twice in my life. Okay? And the very first time I asked, I, I heard it was um, when I was in the university. <coughs> and I was praying about God's plan for my life. And I just entered the uh, university of Ibadan then. So the Lord, I heard him clearly, wooden block, uh, Zeke Hall. I can't remember the room now, room number now. In the afternoon I was praying. And I heard the Lord clearly. I was praying about the fellowship to join. I'd gone to IVCU. I'd gone to, and I saw, I saw oasis of love, you know. And, um, and so the Lord told me, go to that place. So I joined that fellowship by divine direction. And when I got there, I knew that was where I was supposed to be. So, and that's, now looking, you know, looking back now, that was obviously part of the divine plan of God for my life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the second time I will hear God's voice, you know, audible voice, okay? He leads us majorly by the word witness. Now, was when I was going to join Bible City Church, my fourth year, after I finished, after I finished school, finished exams and all that, you know, and submitted my project. So I was tired praying. Of course, I was going to leave campus. Lord, so where do you want me to go? Where do you want me to go? What? So what do you want me to do about ministry? So my friends were already in ministry. You know, you know, Reverend Femi Oduwale, who will be ministry in camp meeting this year. Those ones are already doing ministry big time, traveling all over the place. You know, Reverend Okumba was ready. Those are my contemporaries, my friends, you know, quite a number of them, you know, doing great exploits for the Lord all over these nations, you know. And here I was just sitting down in one fellowship as an assistant pastor. Okay, now I've finished. So what next? Hallelujah. 
and it's something that how do you find out you pray about it tell your neighbor you pray, pray. come on tell your neighbor again pray. pray it's not something you think out it's something you pray out so if you are not if you are not a serious prayer person you know do you know many times uh, it is when we want to marry that's when we start to pray lord who, who is was who do you want me to marry if you have not been obeying god in those other smaller instructions when it comes to that one you might miss it hallelujah pray so don't wait until you want to make those major decisions so, so i was praying that afternoon and um, and i heard the lord Tell me that I should go and join Bible City Church. I said, as what? He said, as a member. I said, okay. I said, well, Father, my ministry. He said, go and join Bible City Church as a member, period. And, and I came into the church as a member. Sat down there. Of course, you know, we have some of these funny things that when, you know, if it is the Lord that is speaking, everything we just walk into the pa, 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 pa. No! Paul went to Philippi and the first, his first experience was what? Was jail. So you can be in the perfect will of God and end up in jail. Did you hear what I said? You can be in the perfect will of God and be sacked. I say, ah, Uluwa, ah, sack, no. I bind sacking. Make sure you are not binding the will of God. Hallelujah. You can be in the will of God and not be promoted. You say, ah, no, promotion comes from the Lord. You can be walking the perfect will of God and not be promoted. Praise the Lord. And you'll be in the perfect will of God. So, the, therefore, the perfect will of God is not everything falling into place. The lines are falling for me in pleasant places. I have a godly heritage. So, the line, everything has to fall into place. Everything doesn't have to fall into place. I was walking the will of God and I walked three times. I walked from Igbe to to, to, to Moshalashi, I'm to and fro because I didn't have transport money. And I was told to go to Bible City Church when I could have gone to a church in Egbe. Because I didn't have transport money. Those of you that know where Egbe is, you know, it's quite a distance from Egbe to Moshalashi bus stop here in Mushi to go towards Ujuel Egba. And I was in the will of God. I know, like one preacher said, you would think that, okay, you know, at least you are in the will of God. Maybe somebody, the Lord will minister to Brotunji to, to just say, hey, Pastor Paul, I, I think you should, I should, let me just give you the transport money. He was not in the spirit that day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now maybe a miracle will just happen, you know. Maybe somebody will just meet you and say, hey, bro, I just feel like, you know, blessing you with this, uh, you know, and all that. But I was in the will of God. Glory to God. I remember after, even after pastoring, after I took up the pastorate of the church, that I, 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 twice I wrote my resignation letter. <laughs> so, some of you are hearing it for the first time. Uh, I wrote my resignation letter two times to resign from the pastorate and leave this church and go somewhere else that was Looking very hallelujah twice. After writing twice, I tore it twice. It's not your will. Did you hear what I said? So after the first thing you ask, what's my assignment? And then the second question you've got to ask. Lord, where is the place of my assignment? Where is the place? So the second question is about the place. 
Where do you want me to be? Where do you want me to be? Don't just say, I, 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 this, is why, this is where I want, I just feel I should be there. This is where I like to be. It's not about where you like to be. Hallelujah. And of course, like I've said, the definition of success is obedience to the will of God. Did you hear what I said? It's what was the definition of success? Success is not in physical things. We've got to drum this over and over and over into the ears of the believer. Success. Oh, the Lord. Oh, wow, look at him. He, she, she's so blessed. Everything is just working out perfectly for her. She has, she has a good job. She has a good husband. She has a good wife. He, she has good children. He has, a, he has good home. living in a fine place. You know, driving a very good car. You, you know, man. Hallelujah. Do you know the day the, 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 the Lord delivered me from, from car possession? Hallelujah. Was three weeks after my wife bought a brand new tear rubber. What do you call it? CRV in 2009. I was the one that went to take possession of it, drove it out of the factory or, or the showroom or wherever, you know, I picked it from. Three weeks after, in front of Silver Bed Galleria, I was the one driving. We were about to park and somebody was reversing a bit, reversed and hit the car. Three weeks after, Yay! Brand new. 5.4 million or there about at that time. Or 4.5. I think it's 4.5. Yeah. So, yeah! Three weeks after. Cha-cha. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then, you know, the Holy Spirit just told me, for six weeks, it was out of circulation. We had to take it back. The Holy Spirit just you see. See your life. <laughs> Carry this thing, put for head now. You will just have hypertension. It's nothing. Until you get to a place where those things mean nothing. You will not know how to handle them the way God wants you to handle them. They're not they mean nothing. Hallelujah. So, so when people, someone bashes my car or scratches my car, it's this. Of course, I get angry. Bible says, be angry and sin not. So I'll be angry because I'm going to spend money to fix it. But after that, mm, glory to God. So there is a place of your assignment. That's why thank God, you know, uh, thank God for, for brethren traveling and all that. That everybody's traveling does not mean that you have to find out from God first. Oh, pastor, they are traveling and they are doing where we are hearing testimonies. Hallelujah. Number one, don't let pictures deceive you. Number two, hallelujah, that they are doing well does not mean that they are in the plan of God. Your definition of doing well is, you know, they are comfortable physically. That's not a plan of God. It may not be in the plan of God. I have friends who were called into ministry and they jettisoned, they traveled and today they are nowhere, they are nowhere near ministry except going to church. Reduce their lives to just going to church. And the anointing of God that was upon them for humanity being wasted. So before you leave, where, before you go to a place, ask God. 
God, is this your plan for me? God told Abraham, he said, leave your father's house to a place or to a land, to a place I'm going to show you. Isaac, in Genesis chapter 26, uh, when the famine came uh, and the Bible said the famine was more severe than the one that, uh, that Abraham, his father, experienced, uh, he determined to go to Egypt. Uh, and God spoke to him, hey boy, don't go down to Egypt. Stay where you are and I will bless you there. There is a place. Tell your neighbor there is a place. When Jesus sent his disciples out first time, he said, don't go to Samaria. Don't go to the Gentiles. Don't go anywhere. Just stay within the, the confines of the house of Israel. There's a place. And after his resurrection, that same Jesus now said, okay, go to all the world. There's a place. So he can tell you to stay here now and tomorrow he tells you to go somewhere else. The will of God is not about your comfort. It's not about my comfort. It's about what he wants done. I remember in 1989, you know, I got a scholarship to go study engineering in, I had an opportunity to get a scholarship to go study engineering in Russia. You know, yeah. And um, I really wanted to do it. But I, I just, I just knew in my heart that was not what I should do. You know, if I had gotten the admission in Russia, I probably most most likely I won't be here today. I won't be doing what God. I, you even know me. Most likely I'll be out somewhere out in the in in the in, in, the, in, the, in other parts of the world. My friend, I even went, I have a friend who, who, it was through his uncle who wanted to get the admission. His uh, uncle was the, uh, was the, the scholarship rather. The uncle was the Secretary General of uh, Nigerian Russian Friendship League. He got a job, even he went to study medicine. He's in the US now. He's in Tampa, Florida. You know. But I was him. But I was on me. Hallelujah. And now, now, this was an opportunity that I had after my father had passed on. And I had nobody to sponsor me through school. <laughs> no one to sponsor me through school. This was, I mean, easy one. It's a scholarship. At least I'll be sending dollars. I remember very well that my friend, the one that went to Moscow, I remember him sending me $100 at the time from Moscow. I remember he sent me money. So I said, hey, see, if to see Nami go now, eh? Nami for the send the money. Oh. Hallelujah. Listen, there's somebody, don't, God had to teach me something. Don't be, don't, don't be too proud to receive when I ask people to bless you. And don't look down on yourself as a receiver. Amen. That I have given to you does not mean that you are lower than me. It is a privilege to be a giver. Are you listening to me? Did people give to Jesus? Jesus had partners in Luke chapter 8, verse 1 to 3. The Bible tells us about that. But he was the son of God, I mean the provider, I mean the, the creator of the whole universe. But he had to bring himself down to a place where he could be, he, he would be receiving. So that you are giving to a ministry or you are giving to a person. You are not saying, hey, I'm giving, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just being used as the object of God's mercy to sustain him. Uh, look at you. Remember Lazarus and the rich fool, the rich man. If the rich man had known, he would not have been giving crumbs. He would have been giving more than crumbs to Lazarus. 
You understand me? So I, 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 I received it. Praise God. But I'm glad where I am today. The first time I traveled to the U.S., I had an opportunity. I was given an offer, right, to come, to come pastor a church in the U.S. where they will, I'll be receiving $50,000 as my, what do you call it, annual salary. The first time I traveled to the U.S. I said, nah. I didn't, I didn't even tell my wife about it. Hallelujah. Lest you be tempted. <laughs> She's hearing it for the very first time from my mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was giving her, uh, I was like, uh, glory to God. A church in, in, in Philly, you know, what? All that glitters is not God's. So there is a place. Stay in the place. I remember Reverend George Adibwe. He said, I remember him saying that the Lord told him that he should stay in Ilori. And that from Ilori, he was going to travel, he was going to take him all over the world. Amen. When his contemporaries were citing churches in Lagos, he said, no, God told him, stay in Ilori. That's the way you used to come. That's how I used to call it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. And of course, from Lori, I mean, he's one of the most widely traveled ministers in the world in Nigeria. One of the most widely traveled. He even traveled so much, he traveled to Iceland. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. So tell your neighbor there's a place. There's a place. There is a place. There is a place. There is a place. Don't just change jobs. There is a place. Ask God first. Before you put him for the visa lottery, ask. Because after you get the visa lottery, you know, it will be a difficult one to say no. Because your mind will tell you, for you to have won the visa lottery, it means that God is in it. As if God is a lottery. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When you're already at the airport, Pastor, I'm, 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 I want to find, you know, just pray for me that I'm in the will of God. After you're already at the airport, why are you calling me? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. First of all, ask first. There is a place. There is a place. And let me close like this. Praise God. The will of God, the plan and purpose of God for your life, the reason why all these things are so important, the place, the assignment. So we've talked about the assignment. We've talked about the place. Amen. It's because the will of God for your life is not about you. It is about others. The will of God, God told Abraham, he said, Abraham, go to a place that I'm going to show you. He said, I'll make your name great. He said, through you, the families of the earth will be what? Will be blessed. So it was not about Abraham. God's goal was not oh, to make um, Abraham, I'm going to make you famous, I'm going to make you rich, I'm going to make you... No! He said, through you, the families of the earth. Of course, you know that he was talking about the gospel there. Hallelujah. God Paul called Paul. He said, well, I have... Uh, uh, let's look at it, let's look at it. Genesis, uh, no, sorry, Acts of the Apostles. Acts... Chapter uh, 26. Acts 26. Let's see from verse 14. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
Jesus said, rise, verse 16, stand to your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which I will yet reveal to you. So God has called you to be water, to be a witness. God has called you to be a minister. You know, like Pastor Mizdor was saying yesterday. See, the totality, the summation of your life is about your ministry of God. The ministry that God has placed on your life. And ministry is not for you, it's for others. Your, your full-time work is the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your career is a part-time one. But you know, in our practice, we change it. Hallelujah. You know, Paul, Paul still worked. He was a tent maker. He still did his business. But his primary assignment remained what? The, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's the way. God didn't put that for no reason. Because that's the pattern. The things of eternal value. What will, what will make statement for you in heaven? What will make statement for you before the Lord? Because the Bible says that all of us, we are all going to stand before God and give account of our lives. That is how serious it is. What will you say to God? God, Nigeria is very, was very hard, was very difficult. That's the reason why I had to shift. Oh, Lagos was so hard. That's the reason why I had to go to Jigawa. Oh, you know, my salary was so, so, so that's the reason why I had to, I, you know, I have to make, you know, I have to, I mean, take, take care of my family and all that. Did God ask you to go? Hallelujah. Did God ask you to go? Did God ask you to go? The plan of God is already blessed. You pray less when you are in the plan. So you will not be praying for God to bless it. Because it already comes blessed. Because it's, it's, it already comes accepted because it came from him. That person you want to marry, is he in the will of God? Is he in the will of God for you to marry that person? We are going to talk about that next week. Hallelujah. The place where you are now. You know, the world we live in loves comfort. And they project comfort. That's what they use to sell things. Praise the Lord. You know, comfort, comfort, comfort. Christianity is not about comfort. You know, I'm trying to say the same thing in various ways. It's not about what? Comfort. Glory to God. God will comfort you. I've preached it before. So that your life can be comfortable. Uh -uh. <laughs> it's not true. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When he says, I am, uh, Lord, you said, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, you, uh, what was it now? My, my plans, I know the thoughts I have towards you, plans to give you a future and a hope, you know, or an expected end. Who determines the expected end? Hallelujah. So we are saying that we are going higher, saying, Lord, uh, this is my life. Abraham, get on the keyboard. Uh, this is my life. This is my life. This is my life. Lord, uh, this is my life. Do, do with it. Yes, I'm your child, right? But I'm now your servant. Do with it whatever you want to do. do. Whatever you want, wherever you want me to stay, I'll stay. Wherever you want me to go, I'll go. There is a place of my assignment. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Praise God. There's a place of my assignment. There's a place of my assignment. There's a place of my assignment. Lord, show me. Lord, if you want me to stay in this company, I'll stay there. You know, I was having a conversation with someone recently who said, I, I, want, to, I want to stay. I don't want to stay in a, in, in a particular place. You know, why? Because, you know, there is, their, their standard is not like the kind of standard that I'm used to. I said, I said, I said, have, have you asked God? Have you asked God? Have you found out whether that is where God wants you to stay? I told the person, I said, if I go to a village, right, and, and I see a church there, and they are not excellent minded, will I say because they are not excellent minded? You know, Hallelujah. Therefore, I will not stay there. What is the will of God that I should fellowship with the brethren? Whether it is Paco Church or it is Excellent Church, you know. So, just like you are saying, you, you know, some people will come to this church now and say, These people are not even excellent minded. <laughs> See, they are not even excellent minded. Right? Meanwhile, some other people will come here and say, wow, this is beautiful. That's why you see, don't run, don't follow. Oh, this is the, this is the inting now. Don't, don't, don't follow people to run race. Some people have a 20-year plan. Me, I don't have. Did you hear what I said? This church does not have 20-year plan. Some people may have 40-year plan. We, we don't. We follow one step at a time. My wife usually says it. If the Lord says stop encounter women's, sorry, extraordinary women's conference and fellowship, she's going to stop it. Oh, so for the next 20 years, this is where women's conference something, something is going to be for the next 20 years. This is not Lafarge. <laughs> Lafarge can do that. Uh, Dangote can do that. Right? Um, who else? Who else? Procter and Gambo can do that. Union Bank can do that. Are they still existing? Pardon me if you have an account there. <laughs> I hope they won't sue me. Union Bank still exists. It still exists. You know? Praise God. I, they've been bought over by another uh, uh, somebody else. I pray that the God will strengthen them so that they will make it to work very well. Praise God. So, so they, they can do that. But yours, uh -uh, don't run your life that way. No, no, no. If you plan to fail, I mean, if you fail to plan, you have planned to fail. You don't know where God is taking you in 20 years. But when you are, you know, someone is told me, say, you know, you know, I have my, my life already set out. When I, what I'm going to do at the age of 25, by, by when I finish school at 20, you know, by 25, I'll be doing this. By, by the time I am 30, I have my PhD. And by the time I, by the time I am 30 something, I have, um, I have all my children. I've, you know, so, so, so I, I face my career. And I, 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 I look at you. <laughs> Today, the, the, your, the, the owner of the soul might say, oh yeah. Whatever you do, subject it to God's plan. There is a place for you. That's why you don't envy anybody. The person might be in his place. You know how you mean. Be, you be in your place. That's why you never use wealth to judge whether God is with you or not. Don't use it. I beg you. I beg you. It's a, it's a challenging thing in our world today. Some of us were afraid to get married. we singles because we don't have everything in place. You say, you know, if I marry, I want to have this, have that, have that in place. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to talk about seasons and plan, God's plans in this. The 
there is a season. Have you asked God? God, concerning the area of marriage, when do you want me to do it now? Ask. The season I got, the time I got, I knew that was when I should. Or <laughs> if I missed it that time, I may get married eventually. But you never know the things that you would have missed because you missed that season. Glory to God. So there's a place. Tell your neighbor there's a place for your assignment. Tell your neighbor there is an assignment that needs a place to be fulfilled. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We're grateful. We're grateful. We're grateful. We're grateful. We're grateful. We're grateful. 